Hello, attention! Today we are visiting Aroca. Aroca, it's an uh, old town with uh, in, a, a lot of influence in the beginning of the Kingdom of Portugal and now it's a small uh, county that is quite popular uh, for uh, geotourism, which means like hiking and it has the highest waterfall in Europe so let's see if we can find it today so join me on this adventure and let's go oh she's so cute this is the cows from this region hello cow let's see if I can show you they're so cute and this one is big kind of so we're here actually the village is a lot bigger than i expected it's really big but whatever enough rambling let's check the monastery so here it is the mythical convento da roca that I was looking for. It's so much bigger than I expected. Like I saw it, of course, when I entered the, the town from a distance, but it's so big. Like, I, I don't know why I expected something small, maybe because it's quite old. Oh my god, it's fucking huge, man. Like, of course, uh, in European terms, it's not that big, but for Portugal, this is quite big. Like, we usually don't have that those big buildings here. Especially in smaller towns. Social anxiety is kicking in quite hard because there's a lot of teenagers. Which is always a good sign for a village. It means there's youth, so there's future. So this region was actually already settled before the Roman times, because there's artifacts. And then the Romans came, they settled here, but this was never quite famous because it was away from the sea and away from the main roads. And uh, of course, after the fall of the Roman Empire, this region was conquered, particularly with German tribes like the Visigoths and the Swedes. And um, then the Arabs came, they took the, uh, these places. These Visigoth and Swift tribes converted to Christianity, before of course. So then they uh, immigrated, they, they fled more north to run away from the, the Islamic uh, Caliphate. So during the Reconquista, these Christians came back, they would already not call themselves Visigoths or Swifts, of course, they were from here now. And uh, they settled here again and they created a monastery. And this was in the 10th century. The monastery was not that big at the time, but it became very popular in uh, Portuguese culture. In the 13th century, when uh, the granddaughter of uh, the first king of Portugal, so she was the daughter of the second king of Portugal and sister of the third, of course, she became a nun here and she was very, very loved by the people. So this became a, a place of uh, prestige where there was a lot of wealth because many people came here, especially people with uh, power and influence and they would spend money here. and. Uh, the, there was development in the land. This lady was actually so beloved that she became a saint. She is now a saint. She was considered a saint in the 18th century. Here it is, the statue of the princess nun. Oh, here, here. Mafalda, the granddaughter of uh, Dom Afonso Henriques. Anxiety is really kicking in. There's so many things, man. And they're just looking and I'm just like... So, let's go around the town a little bit to get to know it a little bit better. Mm -hmm. 
in every major convent in Portugal you always have a place that sells doces conventuais which means conventual sweets because much of the pastry in Portugal was made by nuns and monks because they had the money and time to make it so let's see if it's any good so here it is the conventual sweets from this place one and two and they always have something in common they're always different from each convent each region but they always have something in common sugar probably from the the time of uh, the empire or so i don't know eggs a lot of eggs and yeah i guess that's it very sugary and very eggy let's try it mm, so soft i didn't expect that but yeah it's very good i really like it but um i'd say it's not for everyone but if you're portuguese you're gonna love it because it's mm, mm, mm. I look like a retard eating and filming at the same time but I don't care mm. they're a lot less sweet than I expected which is surprisingly good this one has more things in it it's more like um, like more complex but it's very nice surprisingly good So I think this is enough of the town and uh, the day is short so let's go find the tallest waterfall of Europe. So here it is, Europe's tallest waterfall. Fuck. It's foggy. It's very, very foggy. And it's actually not as impressive as I expected. But yeah, the weather is really bad, man. I bet this is a very cinematic place. But yeah, I even have the drone, but I, I cannot fly like this. Okay, I guess this is the Instagram picture spot. Well, I guess it's still very beautiful. And... Um, the fog also has its advantages. It's completely empty, so we can enjoy the silence. It's curious that there's uh, houses right in the beginning of the waterfall. Interesting. 
I don't know if this is a village or if uh, it's just uh, because of the location, you know what I mean? Like uh, it's a weekend house. So this isn't quite what I was expecting, but on the good side, it's still very nice that it's not raining. The forecast for today was actually rain and uh, it's still day, so we can still look around a little bit. So some of the abandoned houses, for example, that there's around here and see what's up around here. Let's go. Oh, it's closed. It doesn't have any details or or uh, like a fence or anything. Oh, and there's a beer, nice. So I guess this is probably someone's weekend house that uh, didn't got approved. That happens. Some in Portugal, people build the houses and then they get approval for the houses, it's very common. And very rarely they're not approved, this is probably the case. But it has uh, electricity, see here? Nice. Oh, there's dog and there's sheep, nice. This time there's a shepherd. There's two dogs. So cute. Oh, ships, ships, ships. They're so fucking cute. Nice. Oh, sheepies. passed here before and I didn't got a chance to show you guys this the best thing of today oh so many and they're so cute oh. <laughs> mountain cats serre cats they look so fluffy and they're so cute oh oh but you're cute too and they're kind of smallish compared with the, the average cat, I'd say. They're so cute. So let's explore here. Uh, it looked like they had some abandoned house or so. So apparently if you want to have lunch and you brought it from home, you can have a snack here. And you even have a place to cook. And the sink, what? Nice. Well, there's no sink, but it's there, the place. And these actually might even be legal, because it's uh, inside, kind of, inside each house. Because in Portugal you cannot make fires to cook because uh, of uh, forest fires. But uh, if it's inside like this, maybe you can, I know, I'm not sure, because the law changes ever so often, you know. This place looks really cool to hike. You have a lot of paths and it's very hike friendly. I think the most famous hike right now in Portugal is actually here. They call it Passadiço do Paiva. It's probably coming up in uh, another video soon. Let's see, I don't know. Ooh, abandoned house. I love it. So, I believe this is a forest guard house that they were very common, common during the dictatorship until uh, 74, you know. Uh, there was a huge care with many things that now you don't have as much because there was a lot of patriotism and uh, pro-nationality things. So the forests were very well kept, people say, back then. And everywhere you had these houses and most of them are now abandoned. So if you see this in Portugal, a house like this in any forest, which is not uncommon next to the road, you know now that is a forest guy house. 
So here we probably have this tiny tractor or a jeep or something car to <laughs> go around. Ooh, this hole looks spooky. Ah, it's just a hole. Let's go in. Oh shit, we there's still wood. Oh my god, look at the size of this fireplace. Oh my god, it's insane. I'm even sad I don't brought the selfie stick. I have it in the car. And the car is not that close. But uh, can you see the size? Probably not. Like uh, I can, I can see inside. Oh, oops. I'm inside the fireplace right now. See, insane, insane. Yeah, very big. It's a bit dark, so the camera might not pick it up that well. But yeah, this is probably like 170 the height. I'm 180, and I'm slightly taller than this. Toilet with showers, nice toilet. Fuck boy. Like uh, you will probably be very, be very isolated, of, of course, as a forest guy. You're uh, living your life away from everyone. But you have a nice house, let me tell you. The house looks really nice. Made of stone and everything. I don't know what happened to the floor. But this is a quite nice house by Portuguese standards, at least from 2020, you know that everything is so expensive. Most people live in very small houses now. For one person, this is amazing. Maybe they live with their families as well, I don't know. Yeah, but this looks great. And yeah, you can see here that uh, this was supposed to be a lot taller. So the ceiling is tall as fuck, but it's not that tall in reality. Ta-da! There it is. The forest guard house. It's really cool. Yeah, a really good... Uh, I think a really cool uh, investment from the government, if I was uh, like environmental ministry or economy uh, ministry or something, is you can just remake these houses and uh, Airbnb them from the government. I'm sure this would have a lot of, of um, clients. Imagine this like perfect, huge garden. Amazing. Or you can even make it a cafe, even better. Make it a cafe or a restaurant and you just rent it as the government, like they do in the beach in Portugal at least. Every cafe in the beach in Portugal, because the beach is public, every cafe you go to in the beach or restaurant, it's like property of the government, you know? They just rent it. It's called a concession and uh, it generates revenue for the government, which is really cool, I guess. So if you're buying a beer, in the beach and you're paying like three euros and you're like, fuck, it's so expensive. Well, yes, but you're providing a lot of, you're f financing a lot of nice things, especially related with the sea and the maintenance of the beaches. So be proud about it. With this, I think it's time to say goodbye. This is an amazing place that I'm a bit even embarrassed of not knowing it that well, because it's not that far from where I usually am. And, uh, and yeah, I'm definitely gonna come back here, I hope, in uh, without fog to see the waterfall and so on. And there's so many places to explore, there's so many, It's like, they call it Geo Park, because there's like caves and waterfalls and uh, rocks that are amazing and so on and so on. So it's definitely a place to explore more. So I hope you enjoyed. And... Uh, I hope to see you soon, share this video with your grandmother and with your cousins and everyone that you want to annoy <laughs> and ciao, see you! Oh Kochitski, 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 oh Kochitsko, oh don't run! Kotichku, 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 ah, kotichki.